All right, we're going to give a quick intro on how to set up a link stub welding system to weld aluminum fasteners to aluminum substrate. Uh, the first thing I want to identify is what we have here, or what components we have. Uh, gap gun for welding aluminum. Uh, the ground cables, two ground cables, 10 footers. Power supply and AC cord. Accessory kit. Fasteners and uh, aluminum plate that we're going to be welding to. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is start hooking up our cables. So what we'll do is we will identify the ground terminals, put the connectors in, and twist to lock. They need to be tight or they'll get arcing at the terminals when we do welding. So it's important that at the start of every time you go to weld, we lock the cables in properly. We're going to do the same thing for the gun. We're going to identify the weld cable and then this other cable here, the control cable that sends the triggering signals to the welding machine. Twist to lock. And then this is a screw fitting. Line up the keyway and tighten the thumb wheel until it locks into the connectors. Our next thing is we can plug in the machine. The plug is located on the rear panel by the serial plate. It's a simple computer cord. Plug in here and then put into our 110 volt outlet. The outlet should be weighted for about 10 amps. On switch on the back will power up the machine. We can safely set the gun up with the machine powered or we can power down. So for this case, I'm going to power down. Now we're going to grab our accessory kit, grab the chuck that we need. We're going to identify as a quarter inch chuck and then the studs. There's a piece of all thread on the collet and we want to insert the stud into the collet all the way and then adjust the all thread so that there is a gap between the flange of the fastener and the collet. We do this so we don't weld the stud to the collet. If we have the, co the stud pushed hard against the collet, we will arc against the collet and the collet will wear prematurely. We just want to lock the nut up. I use my fingers. You can use a set of pliers or a wrench. And then we're going to insert the collet into the gun. The collet wants to go all the way into the gun and push back against the backstop in the gun. Once we have that established, we're going to use this nut here and we're going to just snug the, the nut to grab the collet. Next, we want to adjust our foot piece of the gun. This is the foot piece here, and then we just want to adjust it so that just the head of the stud, or what we call the flange, is sticking out beyond the foot piece. This is a very critical part of the setup. We will lock on the four set screws here to lock the legs in place. And then we're going to confirm the spring pressure on the gun. This window identifies the spring pressure. Right now the spring pressure is set to positive. When we weld aluminum fasteners, we always want it on maximum spring pressure. This gives the proper forging pressure to push the stud into the molten material. If it's not on positive, a flat screwdriver can make an adjustment here on this screw and we can turn it and the spring guide will move to negative or back to positive as you go clockwise. So now we have our gun properly set up, our cable set up, and we have our machine here. We're going to power the machine up. Next is to identify our proper weld voltage. We have a matrix here where we can look and establish where we're going to be. So we're welding quarter inch aluminum. So we're going to pick up the aluminum and go across the diameter to get to quarter inch in aluminum and where they meet at 150 volts. I will adjust the potentiometer up to 150 volts. 
thereabouts, and our voltage is set. Next, we want to get our aluminum. This is a 5000 series aluminum, and we're going to put it on our table or our bench. We're going to attach our grounds now. The ideal ground position is diametrically opposite, so one corner or one corner. This way the electricity that flows through the grounds is spread evenly out throughout the plate. Obviously we can't use that in every situation. So in this case here I'm going to ground to one corner and the other corner. Our grounds are set and we're ready to weld. Before I weld, I want to talk a little bit about the troubleshooting lights on the machine. We have troubleshooting here or a diagnostic LEDs. The amber light means 110 volts is uh, on the machine. Ready means the capacitor bank is up to charge and at its set point, which is 150. Fault light means something uh, is happening to the machine and if that were to come on, you would want to probably either call IWT or check your manual, see what the fault light entails. One of the fault lights indicates that the machine's overheated. We have stud on work, and we can get that by looking at the plate and holding the stud onto the work surface, and that will illuminate. It's to make sure that we have continuity on the cable set. Also, very important for gap welding is uh, the gun on work, and the gun on work tells you that the foot piece is on the work surface. For safety, we need to have gun on work in order to make a gap weld. So if I lay the foot piece on the gun, I'll have gun on work. Finally, is well complete, and that illuminates after you make a weld and pull the gun off the work surface. So let's make it a weld. I'm going to hold it down to the material. I'm going to push down so that we're against the foot piece here, and I'm going to pull the trigger. I'm going to lift off, and there we have a good weld. What we're looking for for a good weld is a flash around it, and not necessarily a puddle and we want to see a fillet or the flash all the way around the fastener. That's a good example of a good weld. Next we'll show an example of a cold weld where we reduce the voltage and make a weld. This is an example of a cold weld. No fillet formation at all. It's a cold weld. I mean it's noticeably cold. And then we'll do a hot weld we have the voltage turned all the way up. This is a hot weld. You can see that we're burning the threads of the collet and the stud. We have a big puddle here, or a big flash. This weld may be a good weld when we test it, but appearance-wise, it's not a good weld. So we're going to go back to 150 volts. We're going to make a couple of good welds and test them. Once again, we have a nice flash all the way around. and I like to test them using a bending bar. And there you have it, set up for welding quarter 20 aluminum with the gap gun and the Lynx modular system.